Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Now, I hadn't planned on talking about the Delta emulator that came out for iOS a few months ago, and it's been pretty popular ever since. But when I saw it was coming to iPad, and moreover, when I looked at the release notes of what they were adding for iPad support, it got my attention. You know, I'm not a huge retro gamer. I prefer playing new stuff instead of, you know, replaying the old stuff, but the level of care that the team has put into the iPad version really just is so cool. So I just wanted to go over some of the more interesting points that I noticed. This is not a full review of this app because again, I'm not a retro gamer. So this will mostly be focused on the multitasking aspects, which I think are super cool. So let's go ahead and launch into the app. And you see you get a nice paginated interface with a page per emulated system, Super NES, N64, Game Boy Color, etc. Right. So far, nice interface, but what you'd expect. I'm going to jump into a game. So I'm going to start Super Mario Kart. I get this, these nice touch controls, which actually don't look too bad for a touch game. You know, touch game is usually easier on iPad because you have more space. Uh, but this looks pretty decent. What if for some reason I want to play two games? Well, Delta added support for split view. So I'm going to come to the dock here. I'm going to drag another Delta window over to the side. And then the way this works is you can only have one game running per system you're emulating. So since I'm already running a Super Nintendo game over here, I'm going to pick a different system. In this case, I'm actually going to do NES on this other window. We'll see that it starts loading and the game on the other side pauses, which is a pretty reasonable default behavior, but something you can change, which we'll get to in a minute. I'll also note that it's kind of cool, the touch controls here, it's kind of floating controller. You can see it's switching interfaces based on the system. So a more Super NES style controller, a more NES style controller. But I can have these two games side by side. So let's go a step further. What if I want to, for some reason, run a game in slide over? You can do that. So again, I'm going to come to the dock. I'm going to pull up Delta. I'm going to open a slide over window. I'm going to pick a different system. How about Nintendo DS? I don't know why this needs the microphone, but we'll go ahead and do it. And voila, you can have three games running in the same workspace for whatever reason you might want to do that. So I hope someone tells me in the comments. So this is pretty cool in and of itself. And again, I can just jump between them, the other two pause when the other one's active. But since I'm running this on an M series iPad, that means I have access to stage manager. So what I'm going to do is turn that on and let's see what else we can do with this. And now we have, in a nice floating window interface, and I will resize these so you can see this a little better, one, two, three, games all running in floating windows, which is super cool. All right, so what else can we do with this? I'm going to drag another Delta window out from the dock, but this time what I'm going to do is actually remember that setting I mentioned earlier about pausing the game while inactive. Well, here is that setting. I could probably access it from one of these, but I find it easier to do it from another window. So if I disable that and I start tapping between games, you'll notice all three of them are live. So many apps just barely support Split View or Stage Manager, but the developers here have, I feel like, really done their homework and gone the extra mile for iPad support. As you probably know, if you have Stage Manager turned on on your iPad and then you connect it to an external display, you can actually run four apps in a workspace on your iPad and then four apps on the external display. So I was hoping I'd be able to get eight games running at once, but it looks like the default behavior that I can't seem to turn off is to use that second display 
as an external display. So if I were to start a game, it automatically fills that second display, which honestly is probably what 90% of people would want when you plug your iPad into a display, especially if you have an external controller. But just something to note, I thought it'd be pretty cool if you could run eight games at once, but again, there's really no reason to do that. The last thing I want to do is show you what handoff support looks like. Now, handoff is supposed to work between iOS, iPadOS, and macOS. I'm just going to show iOS and iPadOS today, but you can imagine what that would look like on the Mac. So I'm been, I've been playing Batman Vengeance on the phone, and I'm going to try not to die here. I'm going to advance a little bit here. Of course, if I die... You'll never know, so I will edit it out, but let me just go a little bit further. Uh, this is a good spot. Kill this guy. Okay, so I'm on this bridge with this fence pattern. What I'm going to do, I'm just going to pause it. I don't know if I have to, but it makes me feel better. So I'm going to pause the game. I'm going to go to my iPad. And you'll see in the Handoff area, I've got the Delta icon. I'm going to tap that. It launches, and look, I am right where I left off on the phone, which has closed itself. And I should be able to continue from there. So that's really all I wanted to show about the Delta 1.6 update for iPad. Again, this is not a full review of the emulator. I'm sure there's a retro gaming channel that's already done a better overview, but I was just really impressed with the multitasking capabilities that the team baked into this app. This is an unfortunately rare example of a developer actually caring about iPad and iPad OS support and actually taking advantage of its unique capabilities. Major props to the team behind Delta. If you haven't checked it out, I would encourage you to do so because it's a lot of fun. That's it for this one. Thank you for watching. If you could like and subscribe on your way out, that would help me out a bunch. Make sure to follow me on social media at SlatePad, and I will catch you in the next one. Take care.